While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Shalom, it's Officer Simakaya. Shalom, shalom, Most High Christ bless, Officer Judah. Shalom, Most High Christ bless, Officer Asa. Today we're going to be doing a class entitled Sabbath Excuses. Uh, give me Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Because as, as we've been, of course, we've been through the pandemic. We, we going through the pandemic. A lot of these things are going on. And, and Israel has jumped on the bandwagon of making excuses to not come to the Sabbath. Read that. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we all, we read this scripture all the time, every time, just about every class you hear this, hear this scripture. So everything that we, we uh, study and read throughout the Bible, it was written for us to learn how we must move. We constantly look through the scriptures to learn what to do and what not to do based on the things that our forefathers did. And the things that, whether it was judgment or whether they got a, a, a blessing. But we learn from what our forefathers did, did so that we have patience to continue in this walk. Patience to continue in this truth. And we have hope from us doing the things that we're supposed to be doing. We got hope that we're going to get the kingdom of God as promised because we're keeping the commandment. Go to Second Ezra chapter 9. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 29. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 29. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 29. O Lord, thou that showest thyself unto us, thou wilt show unto our fathers in the wilderness, in a place where no man treadeth, in a barren place where they came out of Egypt. So we see that the Most High showed itself only to the nation of Israel. And he showed us, showed himself to us when he, when he delivered us out of Egypt and took us through the wilderness. Read. Verse 30. And thou spakest, saying, Hear me, O Israel, and mark my words, thou seed of Jacob. Uh-huh. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. So when we was going through the wilderness after we were delivered out of Egypt, the Most High reintroduced to us his laws. Read. Verse 32. But our fathers, which received the law, kept it not, and observed not thy ordinances, and through the fruit of thy law did not perish, neither could it, for it was thine. Uh, read that again. But our fathers, which received the law, kept it not, and observed not thy ordinances, and through the fruit of thy law did not perish. Neither Read could the last part again. Though the fruit of thy law did not perish, neither could it, for it was thine. So the Most High gave us his laws so that we can bear fruit. So they may bear fruit. It says, in verse 31, it says, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and you shall be honored in it forever. So when the Most High gave us his laws, it's supposed to bring forth fruit in us. And then it says... But our fathers, they received the law, but they did not keep it and did not observe thy ordinance, ordinances. That's how you know we are Israel, because we're doing the same exact thing today. And it says, though the fruit of thy law did not perish, neither could it, for thy, it was thine. So the laws of God are everlasting, just like the Most High God is everlasting. Read on, verse 33. Verse 33. Yet that they received it perished. Read that again. Yet. They that received it perished because they kept not the thing that was sown in them. So we perished because we did not keep God's laws. Give me that in um, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The way of understanding is God's laws. We wander out of the way of understanding. And what happens? Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So that's what 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 33 it says, yet they that received it perished because they kept not the thing that was sown in them. We decided, read that again in Proverbs. 
The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. So we decided not to keep. We received the law and we did not keep it. What happened? Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. We remain in the congregation of the dead. We perished because we were separated from God. When we break his commandments, he ain't got nothing to do with us. Uh, jump to verse and back. go to back to 2 Ezra 9, go to verse 37. 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 37. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. So one thing that we must understand that the laws of God, we, we, we come into the truth, we learn we Israel, but we, we still uh, operate in ways where we think we ain't got to keep the God's laws. Out of our mouth, we, we, we actually do, doing the same thing before we doing this. A lot of us doing the same thing in the truth that we was doing before we, before we were in the truth. We honoring God with our lips and our mouth, but then when it comes to keep the commandments, we're not doing it. We retreat it as if we ain't got to keep it. That's why I say it's not with the, but the scriptures say, notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in its force. We all got to keep, keep that in the front, forefront of our mind. We got to remind ourselves of that every day, day in and day out, and understand that we must keep the commandments. Because the fruit of us not keeping the commandments, as we just read, is that we will perish. We will perish when we do not keep God's commandments. Go to Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans read. And say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. So the feast of the Lord are holy convocations or holy gatherings. Read. Even these are my feasts. So now we're going to go into the feast of the Sabbath. We're not going to read through the whole chapter. We're going to deal with the Sabbath. Read on. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. So the seventh day, the Sabbath, is a holy convocation, meaning we are supposed to gather together one amongst another on the Sabbath day. That's a commandment. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to be reminded of it because we've been, we've, we've been taught about it since we've been in the truth. We come, on, we come together on the Sabbath. We, we shouldn't have to um, be reminded that we got to keep the Sabbath and that the Sabbath is a holy convocation. But through the, through the, uh, the, the pandemic, things going on, a lot of us have forgot that we commanded to come together. Right. A lot of us uh, make excuses on why we can't. We make countless excuses on why we can't come to the Sabbath. And it's excuses that's not excusable. Uh, read on. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So the law, the law is in full force. So the Sabbath day is in full force. We still have to come together. If you're not, if you're not uh, sickly or sick, if ain't nothing wrong with you, you should be making, you should be fighting tooth and nail to get to the Sabbath. You should be making your way, whether you got to make travel arrangements, whether you got to uh, gas up before the Sabbath, build up your immune system. You got to do whatever it takes, whatever is necessary to make sure you get to the Sabbath. Every, every seven day Sabbath, you got to make sure you get there. Because it's not like, it's not like it just pop up out of nowhere like you ain't know it was coming. We, we all got, to, we have to make proper preparation to make sure that we set up to get to the school for the Sabbath, wherever you at. Go to uh, Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31 and 15. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So on the Sabbath day, we also, we, we all, we know, as we know, we also not to, we're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. It's the Sabbath day. It's the day of rest. We're supposed to rest from our labor. We're supposed to rest from the time that we spend during the six days to provide for our families. Read. Verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath Throughout their generations, meaning forever, as long as we are, as long as we are here generating babies and having kids, we're supposed to keep the Sabbath throughout our generations. Us, our kids, 
when they get older, they have kids, it's supposed to be passed down. Uh, uh, it's a uh, tradition. This is supposed to be our tradition, keeping the Sabbath. We coming back to it and we learn it. We got to pass it on to our children. And our children will pass it on to their children. Read. For a perpetual covenant. For a perpetual covenant. Meaning this is forever. Us keeping the Sabbath day is not something that's uh, you do it for three months, then you, you do it every other Sabbath, or uh, three months here, three months there. No, it's a, it's a perpetual covenant. Every seven-day Sabbath, we're supposed to be gathering together. We're supposed to not be working. We're supposed to observe the Sabbath day. Read on. Verse 17, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So the Sabbath day is a sign between the Most High God and the children of Israel. Between the Most High God and the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is it's a sign. Read on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And that's the same. He set an example for us. He rested and was refreshed. We're supposed to rest and re be refreshed. Not lay in your bed. And when they say rest, it don't mean lay in your bed all day Sabbath. All day on the, on a Saturday, cause that's your day off. You just lay in the bed all day, like, nah, this is my day of rest. I had a I had an eighty hour work week, so you know what? I'm just gonna sleep in a day. I'm gonna sit back and stay home. No, that's not what it's talking about. It says, notice it says, rested and was refreshed. When we come around each other, we get refreshed. We come around each other, we see each other, we able to build each other's spirits up, we able to exhort one another. But if you sitting at home, who gonna exhort you? Your bed? No. We suppose it's, you're, that rest is not talking about um, that rest is not talking about you laying up in the bed all day because you you tired. No, that rest is going into you you actually you studying the scriptures along with your fellow brothers and sisters and being refreshed. You being edified, your spirit is being built up. But in verse 17, it says it's a sign. The Sabbath is a sign between. The Most High God and the children of Israel forever. Pull up the definition of sign. A token, something by which another thing is shown or represented. Any visible thing, an emotion, appearance, or event which indicates the existence or approach of something else. Read the sixth one. Number six, a memorial or monument, something to preserve the memory of a thing. What time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. So the Sabbath is a memorial or monument between us and the Most High God. It's a memorial. Us keeping the Sabbath day, to hell with Memorial Day. The Sabbath day is our memorial. Is, I was one of our memorial days. We keep it. Every seven days, we keep the Sabbath. It's a memorial. It's something to preserve the memory of a thing. The Most High established the Sabbath day. In Genesis chapter um, 2 and 1, let's read that real quick. <clears throat> and we, we, keep, we holding on to that custom and keep it on because that's what he gave to us. He gave it to us for a sign. That first definition says a token. Read that. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So us keeping the Sabbath day, we're memorializing it because the Most High kept the Sabbath day. It was the seventh day he rested from all his labors. So it was the same thing that we are supposed to do. We rest from our labors. That's our rest from our labors are going to work, to take, take care of our family, those um, going to our jobs, whatever you do to take care of your family, you own your own business, all that. We rest from that, but we come together amongst one another to get our spirits refreshed. Go from there, go to Ex uh, not Exodus, Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them. 
Look at that sign again. He gave us his Sabbath to be a sign between him and us. Read. That they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifieth them. Uh huh. Verse 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walk not in my statutes, and they despise my judgments. What if a man do? Read, he, read that again. Which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. So this is the Most High letting us know that we, we polluted his Sabbaths. Then and now, today you have Israelites polluting the Lord's Sabbath all over again, polluting this Sabbath, using, using the pandemic as an excuse to not keep this Lord's Sabbath holy, to not come around your brothers and sisters. And like I said, if the shoe fits, wear it. If you're making invalid excuses to not keep the Sabbath, then you have to examine your spirit. If you are, if you are older, you, you, you sickly, you have valid reasons for not keeping the Sabbath, then, hey, that's, that's between you and the Most High. But if you just... Wake up, oh, you know what, I, I can't make the Sabbath. You're just making up any willy-nilly excuse, that's sin. you in the midst of sin because you're making up, you're making an invalid excuse on why you don't want to come around your brothers and sisters that's keeping the commandment, that's just like, keeping the commandments just like you. That ain't, had, that ain't got nothing to do with the pandemic. Get, um, get James chapter 1 and verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Because what we got to understand that because you see, you, you, when you look through the history, you see in the Maccabees, our forefathers was being put to death for keeping the Sabbath. But today we can't, we, we got a, a, a pandemic, we got sickness going around, and you got brothers and sisters that's in, in good health, got strong immune systems, and don't want to keep the Lord's Sabbath day, and they're able to keep it. That's not a good spirit to have. Read that. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endures through this pandemic and still keep, strives to keep the Sabbath. That's what they're saying. Read. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Meaning that when you try, you, 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 uh, you go through temptation, but you fight through it. You're like, you know what? carnally, I want, you know what, my thought, I want to stay at home. I want to sit back. I want to get some rest in. You know what, the pandemic, you know, the pandemic's still around, so you know what, I'm going to chill. No, you, you fight through that. You fight through that thought, and you still get to make your way to the Sabbath. That's when you, it says, he shall receive the crown of life, because you fought to keep the commandment. You fought to uphold God's laws. Read. Which the Lord have promised to them that love him. So the most have promised that we will have the crown of life when we keep his commandments. Read. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God. Don't try to say that, you know what, it's the, it's the pandemic, the Lord, the Lord, the pandemic is the Lord's will. So that's my opportunity to sleep in. That's my opportunity to, hey, you know what, I don't want to get sick, so I'm going to stay at home. I don't want my child to get sick, so... I'm gonna stay at home. I'm gonna stay at home and keep. I'm gonna watch online so that my child don't get sick. You are you assuming you you're assuming that you're gonna get sick when all you gotta do is build your you, you, in 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 um in essence, really all you need to do is make sure you build up, take the necessary steps to build up your immune system, to to take those necessary preventative measures. You gotta wear a mask. Wear a mask. But don't just not attempt to keep the Sabbath and just lay back and sit back like, ah, you know what, uh, I'm going I'm to chill back at home. That's you. That's your lust. Read. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God don't tempt us to break his commandments. When we are tempted, when we, when we have that urge to go against the commandments, we have that desire to do against what the commandments say, that's all us. That's all our nature. That's not the most high. Read. For, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When you had that thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to sit back. I'm going to sleep in today. That's your lust. You enticed by your own lust. 
you had that thought, well, you know what? It's the pandemic. I'm going a, I'm to a chill. I'm going to sit back. No, that's your lust. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to say it again. If the shoe fits, wear it. This ain't talking about those that are the, our elderly brothers and sisters that actually have a, 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 a compromised immune system or you actually, uh, it would be a detriment for you to come around people. We're not talking about, we're not talking about people like that. We're not talking about our, the elderly. We're not talking about, we're not talking about those. We're talking about those that are able-bodied and able to come to the Sabbath, but they decide not to. They decide not to and make up excuse after excuse and use use the pandemic and the sicknesses going around as a guise to lay back and not keep the commandments, to lay back and break God's commandments. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're addressing. You got something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I get uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse... 69 to jump to verse 74. Luke chapter 1, verses 69 and jump to verse 74. Luke chapter 1 and verse 69. Yeah. And have raised up an horn of salvation. Which is Jesus the Christ. Come on. For us in the house of his servant David. 74. Verse 74. That he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Notice it says that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, that we might serve him without fear. The whole purpose of the pandemic is for you to be delivered out of the hand of your enemies. The whole purpose of the world being shut down is for you being delivered out of the hands of your enemies. God forbid that you will move yourself into a spirit where you use the, the, the avenues that the Lord is using to deliver us as an excuse to not keep God's commandments. Because the whole point is that we can serve God without fear. The whole world right now is in fear because of what's going on in the world. God forbid we should be using those things that God is using to deliver us so we can serve him without fear. Now we are using that as an, a stepping stool or an excuse to not serve him. That's the wrong spirit to be in. That's the exact opposite spirit to be in. All right, so I want everybody to take mention and note of that. All right, that's it. So excellent point. Go back to James, James chapter 1 and 15. James chapter 1 and 15. Because what we got to understand, it's going to be, it's going to be trials, it's going to be temptations, it's going to be many things that happen to try to pull us away from keeping the commandment. What we have to do is dig our feet in the ground, and stand strong, fortify ourselves, and stay, no matter what goes on, no matter what happens, we have to fight to keep the commandment. Read. James chapter 1, verse 15. Then, when lust have conceived, read it, 14 with it. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So that, that, that desire to just lay back at home, and sleep in, that's your own lust. That's your own desire. Read. Verse 15. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Then when you when you act on it and you you go ahead and you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, hey, I ain't gonna make I ain't gonna make the Sabbath today. I'm sick. I'm not feeling too well. My I got a headache. My stomach hurt. But in all all in all, you ain't ain't nothing wrong with you. You just using it, you just using your tiredness, so to say, because you worked a long week, using that as a scapegoat to say, ah, you know what? It's a pandemic. You know what? If I got sick symptoms, I'm supposed to quarantine. So you know what? I'm gonna say I'm sick. I'm gonna say I ain't feeling well. Oh, I think my sinuses is, is, is acting up. You're gonna make any excuse in the world to stay back. But read on. Then when lust have conceived, when you act on that desire, when you act on that lust. Read. It bringeth forth sin. It bringeth forth sin. Now you are willingly breaking the Sabbath. And to, to, to man's eyes, we ain't no mind readers, but the most high see. If you if you not if you really not sincerely sick, you really don't have a sincere, um, a sincere and valid excuse for not coming, that's sin. Read. <clears throat> and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth. Death. You're going to find yourself right back in the Christian church. You're going to find yourself not in this truth no more. Because you that, that one, because what's going to happen one Sabbath, you're going to be like, you know what, I'm going I'm to sit back. I'm going to sleep in today. Hey, not feeling well. I ain't going to make it to the school. Then the next Sabbath come, nah, you know what? 
Now, I ain't, I ain't feeling too well. I ain't gonna make it to the school. The next thing you know is six months done went bad, you ain't been to the school. Three months done went bad, you ain't been to the school. Because you you allowed yourself to 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 give in to the desires of your carnal, sinful nature, and it took you, it took you, took you over and took you out. Next thing you know, you gone. Hey man, what ha- what happened to brother such and such? I ain't seen him in like three months. Hey, reach out to him. Reach out to him. No answer. Call sent uh what what you call it? uh call in. Go straight to voicemail. You gone. So don't don't be in that number where you get so comfortable not keeping the Sabbath that now you just back off into the world. You back off into Christianity. You might not physically go to the Christian church, but you're back in that Christian thought. You're in that Christian state of mind thinking that, oh, I'm, I'm watching online. I'm good. No. If you able-bodied, you need to be in the school. Ain't no limitations no more. You need to, If you able-bodied and ain't nothing wrong with you, you need to be, you need to make your way to the school. If you don't have, if you don't have a ride, if you don't have a ride, let's say your car broke down, you shouldn't. You still, that's still not an excuse to just go Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, and you're not coming. You have to make some type of attempt. Quite sure, it's somebody that live around you that's going to the school every Sabbath. You could, you could, you could bum a, get, get. I don't say, is it bum a ride? Is that the right term? You bum a ride with somebody, pitch in on their gas. Your car, it's your car broke down. Until you're able to get your car back on the road, pitch in with somebody else. Carpool. Get to the school. Uh, go back to Ezekiel 20. And where we leave off at? Ezekiel 20 and 13, I think. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. So the Most High was going to annihilate us. He's going to destroy us off the earth. But he had mercy because he remembered his promise, read verse 14. Verse 14. But I wrought my but I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. So he held back. He didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't wipe us out because he thought about his name. He thought about the promise he made to our forefathers. So he withheld. But he still, but we still were punished, and we see that today in captivity. In, in every city from, from country to country, every city we in, what we what's going on? We murdering and shooting kid, shooting each other down. We live in the curses. We living in the slums. We are living the curses. He didn't wipe us out. But now we walking around talking about we black, Negro, uh, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, indigenous. We we saying like we calling ourselves all these names. We don't even know that we Israel. That's a result of us breaking and profaning God's Holy Sabbath, among other, among many other things. Read on. Verse 15. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So this, this is when we were in, when we were in the wilderness, the, the older generation didn't go into the kingdom, didn't go into uh, Israel. The older generation didn't, he waited, that's what we, we wandered 40 years, he waited till they all died off. And then he took, took the, 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 uh, the next generation into the, uh, the land of Israel. And that's what the same thing going to happen today. He said, I also lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Read. Because they despise my judgments. And walk and walk not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. And that's the same thing that a lot of Israel is doing today. Despising God's judgments, walking not in his statutes, and polluting his Sabbaths. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, 
nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.